We begin our broadcast with a chilling video of an international student begging his father to pay his alleged kidnappers a ransom. Jing Wang Yi had been studying at the University of Technology in Sydney before he was reported missing almost two weeks ago. His father receiving disturbing messages from his son's social media account. Blindfolded with blood on his face, a university student pleads his father for help. 20-year-old Jing Wang Ye is an international student who was studying at Sydney's University of Technology when he disappeared more than a week ago. This video was sent to his father from his WeChat account, said to be the work of a kidnapper. It followed a threatening message also sent from his son's account, which read, your son is now with us. If you don't want him to be in trouble and go home quickly, just do as we said. Contact this email. You must remember, this email is the only way to contact us. Mr. Ye's father reported the incident to the New South Wales Police. From his home in China, Mr. Ye's father sent several emails to the address, begging his son's captor not to hurt the 20-year-old. The person demanded Mr. Ye's father pay 80 bitcoins for his son's safe release. Mr. Ye's father replied to the unknown person said he could not pay the ransom, which equated more than $1.2 million. The email read, We were just an average Chinese family. Please pity us. Our reporter Kate Tan broke the story and joins me now. Kate, what's the latest as we come to you? Chester, in a statement to Mojo News, a New South Wales police spokesperson says Mr Ye has been located safe and well after his suspected abduction last month. He was found at Muni Muni on the central coast of New South Wales at around 5.30pm on Sunday. He had been missing for nine days by then. He was located more than an hour's drive from where he was last seen, leaving a unit in Hutsville, south of Sydney, at around 10 a.m. on August 23. Police say the investigation is continuing and no charges has been laid. Mr. Ye has been reportedly reunited with his father, who flew to Sydney Saturday. Chester. Yeah, terrifying ordeal for the student, Kate. Thank you. She came to Australia last year to travel and study, but last week, final year Monash University student Nasali Pereira died after being struck by a car as she crossed a road near Clayton campus. Her death led to a large police investigation. Reporter Sheetal Singh joins us now. Sheetal, what's the latest on this developing story? Chester, police have now arrested two people in relation to an alleged hit and run case that killed 20 year old international student Nasali Pereira. Detectives from the Major Collision Investigation Unit have charged 33-year-old Lauren Hines with being an accessory to the commission of an indictable offence. The pair were filmed by CCTV cameras as they walked through a Clayton service station, moments after the incident last Thursday. They were arrested an officer in Melbourne Southeast on Tuesday afternoon. Police say Ms. Pereira was on her way back home from Monash University when she was hit by a car and thrown more than 20 metres. She couldn't be saved. The tragedy took place as she crossed Wellington Road near Scenic Boulevard in Clayton at around 9.45 p.m. last Thursday. The driver failed to stop. Monash University Senior Vice President Peter Marshall sent out an email to all the students and staff to convey their condolences to all those affected by the tragedy. Ms. Pereira is being remembered a free, wild and young soul by all her friends and family in Sri Lanka. Back to you, Chester. All right, Sheetal, thank you. And now here's Nick Zachariah with a look back at the week's top stories. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has suspended Parliament in the lead-up to Brexit. The move may stop politicians from delaying or cancelling Britain's exit from the European Union, sparking protests across the country. US President Donald Trump has controversially tweeted an image showing a destroyed Iranian space facility. The tweet has received significant backlash with experts believing the image is a highly classified military satellite. Australia's horse racing community has been saddened by the tragic deaths of two jockeys in less than 48 hours. 22-year-old Michaela Claridge died after falling from a horse on Friday morning at a Melbourne race course, while Melanie Tyndall also fell from a horse during a horse race at Darwin Racetrack on Saturday. A gunman has opened fire on civilians and police officers during what was the second mass shooting to be carried out in Texas in a month. At least five people were killed and a further 21 injured before the man was shot dead by police. Activists have taken to the streets of Melbourne slamming a religious freedom law proposed by the federal government. 
The controversial bill aims to protect religious institutions from discrimination claims, but LGBTQI advocates are concerned about the impact it may have on their community. Rainbows fill the sky on a sunny day. A vibrant statement against discrimination. Hundreds of people from the LGBTQI community united, rallying against the religious discrimination bill proposed by the federal government. I'm very concerned that the Liberal government in Australia is trying to uh, take away the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and uh, intersex and queer Australians. If it passes through Parliament, people of faith would be protected from discrimination claims. As such, religious institutions would be able to conduct their affairs according to their religious beliefs. The LGBTQI fear this may include rejecting the provision of health, medical and education services. It's going to see health professionals, not just institutions but individuals who hold conservative religious values be allowed to discriminate against their patients. The draft religious discrimination bill states that it's unlawful to discriminate against Australians on the basis of the religion. But last year, a Yug of Galaxy poll found that 78% of respondents do not support the exclusion of LGBT students and staff from religious schools. Sexual identity should not be a burden, especially not to children. Children should not be subject to homophobia or transphobia. They, they are really upset that we won marriage equality last time around and they really wanted to send a message that they are going to keep trying to fight until we um, pull back some of these liberties that we've got, we've gained. The LGBTQ community believes that this draft bill is an infringement on the basic rights of all the individuals and not just the rainbow community. The draft legislation, which was approved by cabinet ministers last month, will be put forward to the coalition party room when they meet later this month. Karuna Bala Subramanian, Mojo News. A Tamil family has been pleading with the federal government to let them stay in Australia after it's understood their visas expired last year. They were being deported to Sri Lanka on Thursday when an 11th hour court injunction halted their flight. I'm joined now by political correspondent David Bonadio. David, they've since been moved to a detention centre. Yeah, that's right, Chester. The young family from Biloela in central Queensland are now being detained on Christmas Island after a shock attempt to deport them to Sri Lanka. The family was forced onto a plane on Thursday, which was then ordered to land in Darwin mid-flight. Details are not clear, but the family was afforded a last-minute court order that prevented them from being flown to Sri Lanka, where they fear persecution if they are made to return. The Department of Immigration said the family were assessed and are not considered refugees. The former leader of the Labor Party, Bill Shorten, said Dutton and Morrison should let them stay. The government has dropped a draft religious discrimination legislation. The proposed legislation only provides a shield versus a positive right to religious protection. A final draft will be ready by October. It has been criticised by conservative backbenchers and members of the church who say it doesn't go far enough. Scott Morrison has rubbish claims by China that a Sydney man was spying for Australia. Academic and Democratic advocate Yang Hengjun was arrested on August 23 after being detained by Chinese authorities since January. The PM has vowed to protect and support the Australian citizen amid strong warnings from China to stay out of it. Chester, back to you. All right, David, thank you. And now here's sport with Brittany Coles. Thanks, Chester. Nick Kyrgios has gone out in the third round of the US Open after losing to Russian player Andrei Rublev in straight sets. Rublev took the first two sets on tie breaks and then won 6-3 in the third. But Ash Barty is still Australia's winning cup contender after a third round victory over rising Greek player Maria Sakkari. She is now edging ever closer to a blockbuster quarterfinal with Serena Williams. The A-League has announced it's appointing its first female referee. Kate Jaswick has been named the Westfield W League Referee of the Year a record-breaking eight times and most recently refereed two matches at the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. Now she will be making history as the first female on the referee panel for the upcoming season of the Hyundai A-League. Footy fans can rejoice again now that the AFL has concluded its bye week in the lead-up to finals football. 
Week 1 of qualifying and elimination finals will kick off on Thursday night at Optus Stadium in WA when the Eagles take on the Bombers. As the countdown to finals continues, the battle is now well and truly on between the top eight teams. So it's going to be a big week of sport ahead, Chester. Yeah, we look forward to it, Britt. Thank you. A Sunbury family has been left devastated after their letterbox was stolen. Now, you may be thinking it's just a letterbox, but this one's quite unique. It's built in the shape of future arm character Bender the Robot, but the only thing that's left of it is its legs. This out-of-the-ordinary mailbox is a popular fixture among residents in Sunbury, but last week it was stolen. That day I stay at home and he went to work and he sent a message to see that Bender is not is not here anymore and I said, no, are you kidding me? And <laughs> I opened the door and said, my God, what is Ben? <laughs> and, yeah. I, and the kids stay sad as well. Owners Carolina and Greg inherited the unusual mailbox when they purchased the house six months ago and have since grown attached to the robot. We're actually thinking about getting rid of Bender, but it's such a local icon that you know, we're really pleased we kept him, but now he's gone. Yeah. Uh, we miss him. For the initiated, Bender is the robot character from cartoon sci-fi comedy Futurama. Carolina reported the stolen letterbox to the police and posted on social media, pleading for the public to help find it. Community members have also pitched in, creating the hashtag SaveBender campaign. We, we had a person that said, I would like to help, I would like to to help to build in another bender or something else. Neighbours say they're sad to see Postbox Bender gone. I know the previous owner who built it, who was a, an engineer, people come past and take photos of it and around Halloween they normally dress it up and it's just a real shame because he's put the time and effort into, um, into building it. This is what's left of the mailbox, two legs sticking out of the grass. Police are urging anyone with information as to where the rest of the Bender robot sculpture is to come forward. People were even saying they come and take selfies with the letterbox and everybody always um, gives directions relevant to where Bender is. So it's the fifth house on the left past Bender or, you know, yeah. go past Bender, <laughs> turn right. <laughs> yeah, it's, so. a, it's a reverence, yeah. yeah so. and, but we will put something else there. It's yeah. Something hopefully equally as iconic. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. We can have any uh, a normal letterbox. Yeah. It's, it's not for us. Eleanor Freestrom, Mojo News. And that is Mojo News for now. You can stay up to date on our website, mojonews.com.au. I'm Chester Nunn. From our team, bye for now.